Hopefully you've had an opportunity to record or uh, to practice this problem and give it a try yourself. I'm going to walk through the solution. So if you haven't, stop and try this first uh, before watching this video. So in this problem, we're told that we have 50 milliliters of a 0.987 molar sulfuric acid solution that we're going to add to 25 milliliters of a 2.0 molar sodium hydroxide solution. And they're all at 25 degrees Celsius in a coffee cup calorimeter. So this is another acid-base reaction, but one that has a two to one mole ratio, right? Um, and so we, we are gonna see an increase in temperature um, up to 33.9 degrees Celsius. And we need to calculate the enthalpy of this reaction in kilojoules per mole for the limiting reactant. And where stoichiometry comes back again and again and again is if we're combining these two reagents, the amount of heat that's produced is really gonna be dependent on which one is our limiting reactant. Same as the sodium sulfate and the water product that we see. So other pieces of information that are important to this problem is we need a specific heat of the solution. And we're told that it's gonna be 4.184 joules per gram degree Celsius. We're also told to assume the density of the solution is one gram per milliliter, and that we're not going to assume that the calorimeter is going to absorb heat, that it'll all get absorbed into the solution um, of the reaction. So with that information, we are gonna need to calculate the uh, heat of the solution. So we, we need, remember, the, the heat of the solution or the reaction, so the heat of the reaction, sorry, reaction, is equal to the negative of the heat of the solution. And that's equal to the mass of the solution times the specific heat of the solution times that change in temperature. So we need those three components to be able to continue. So let's calculate those first. So for the mass of the solution, this is gonna be equal to that 50 milliliters uh, plus the 25 milliliters uh, that we have. That'll give us the total volume of the solution. Which will be 75. And we can use that density of the solution to convert that total volume into the mass. So I'm gonna multiply that by 1.00 grams per milliliter to get a mass of 75.0 grams. So that gives me the mass of my solution. Next, I really need to know the, um, the, the change in temperature as well. So that change in temperature will be equal to my final temperature minus my initial, so 33.9 minus 25.0 degrees Celsius, which will give me a value of 8.9 degrees Celsius. Okay, so with that information and my specific heat being given as 4.184, I can calculate that heat of the solution and the heat of the reaction. Uh, sorry, I'm kind of sneezy in this lecture. <laughs> so let's go ahead and plug that in. So that heat of the solution will be equal to that heat of the reaction. So I'm going to look at the negative of the heat of the solution, right, based on this equality right here is going to be equal to the, the negative of that mass times specific heat times change in temperature that we show right up here. So it'll be the negative of my 75.0 grams times my 4.184 joules per gram degrees Celsius times at 8.9 degrees Celsius. So my um, negative by Q of solution is going to be So that negative cube solution, when I plug it all into my calculator, is going to equal a value of negative 2.8 times 10 to the third joules. And that, that's really our heat of the reaction. So that's one piece of this puzzle. But now, now we need to report this in a way that uh, 
represent as an extensive property that it's going to be represented based on the amount of reactants that actually are used in a reaction. So we need to report this really per mole. And so what we're looking for is we're looking to plug into that uh, to calculate that enthalpy of the reaction. It's going to be that heat of the reaction divided by the number of moles of the limiting reactant. So cool, we've got one piece of this puzzle already solved right there, but now we need to figure out the limiting reactant and then determine the number of moles we have in this reaction that's giving off this amount of heat. So that way we can record the enthalpy of the reaction. So this, we dig back into a previous chapter, we pull out those stoichiometry skills and we're like, huh, this isn't a mass to mass conversion. This is actually a solution stoichiometry problem. And so we're gonna need to use the information about volume and concentration to get to that critical step of the stoichiometry problem, which is the mole to mole conversion. So I'm going to go ahead and just assume my, my sulfuric acid is the limiting reactant and calculate how much product I would make. And then I'm going to do the same for my sodium hydroxide and calculate a product and compare the two and decide which one's smaller. And that will correspond to the limiting reactant producing that amount. So uh, let's start with our sulfuric acid. So for H2SO4 uh, assumption that it's limiting reactant. We start with our 50 milliliters of our H2SO4. Uh, and so we're gonna need to work in liters because molarity is always in terms of liters rather than milliliters. So I'll multiply this by a liter and divide by a thousand milliliters. So from that point, I can multiply that by my molarity because that'll get me into units of moles. So that's times my 0.987 moles per liter. And that's going to give me a value of 0.049 or sorry, 494 moles of sulfuric acid. All right, so then I can now do a conversion. Uh, and, and I'm gonna show you a different way of doing this. So you can convert all the way to the products, but I'd like to show a way of just comparing directly to the NaOH. Um, so when I don't really need to know the mass or the, the volume of a product that I'm going to form, I'm actually going to convert these moles of sulfuric acid into sodium hydroxide and compare that to how much I have. Um, you could also take this and predict either one of the products, the water or the sodium sulfate, and compare that to the sodium hydroxide as well. So what I will need to react with all of this sodium, or sorry, sulfuric acid, uh, would be twice as much sodium hydroxide. So my 0 0.0494 moles of my H2SO4, if I multiply that by two moles of my sodium hydroxide, divided by my one mole of sulfuric acid. And this is just coming from my coefficients in my balanced equation. I'm gonna get a value of 0 0.0, sorry, 0 0.0987 moles of NaOH needed. So I, I can rewrite this statement here at this point. If all of my H2SO4 reacts, so if it's the limiting reactant, then I will, then it will react with, sorry, not I, Zero point oh nine eight seven moles of NaOH. So now I'm going to ask myself how much NaOH do I actually have? Uh, so I have 25.0 milliliters of my sodium hydroxide solution. So I'm going to convert that into liters first. And now I'm going to multiply it by the concentration I've been given, which is at 2.00 moles per liter. And that's that molarity given in the problem. Uh, and that's going to give me a value of... 0 0.0500 moles of NaOH that I have. So for all of my sulfuric acid to react, I need 0 0.09 moles of sodium hydroxide, but I don't have that. I only have 
0.05. So since 0 0.05 is less than that 0 0.09, the NaOH is the limiting reactant. Now I can solve this the way I, I showed you in mass to mass conversions where I multiply in the moles of each of my reactants by the mole to mole ratio with one of my products and then compare the moles or convert that to grams and compare the grams. I chose to do it this way because all I need for this problem is the number of moles of the limiting reactant. I don't need to know anything in terms of the products. So I want to I, I don't want to do any extra work. So what I do is I predict the amount of uh, moles that I need to react with one of my reactants and compare that to the amount that I have. And so since my sodium hydroxide is my limiting reactant in this case, I can take that 0.05 moles of sodium hydroxide I have, and that becomes the number of moles of my limiting reactant that I would divide my heat of the reaction by. And so then this enthalpy is going to become my negative 2.8 times 10 to the 3 joules divided by my 0.0500 moles of my sodium hydroxide. And that's going to give me a value of negative 56,000 kilo, sorry, joules. Oh, that just got messy, sorry. Joules per mole. Or you could do kilojoules per mole too. So if you wanted to convert that into kilojoules, it would just be negative 56 kilojoules. Oh, per mole. There we go.